we will come up with a power series expansion for the function 1 over 1 plus x in the parentheses raised to the second power. And what's the connection between our best friend and this function? That's the question, right? Remember, we can do algebra with our best friend, and we can also do calculus with our best friend. Differentiation or integration. But then if you want to integrate 1 over 1 minus x, we will end up with ln of something, right? And that's not what we want because we don't have any ln right here at all. And then the key is we will differentiate a version of our best friend and then we'll come up with this function. And what's the version? Well, here we have 1 over, if you just pay attention to the inside, we have 1 plus x. Our best friend is 1 over 1 minus x. So we should come up with a power series for 1 over 1 plus x first. And I will do that right here, 1 over 1 plus x. Let's just focus on this first. And to get a power series for this, it's 1 over 1 minus minus x. Right? We have to look at this as that, so that we have the right to plug in negative x into this x. And we'll just work with the sigma notation right here. Okay? This is the same as sigma when n goes from 0 to infinity. Negative 1, because here we have negative x, it's a negative 1 times x. So we can write this down as negative 1 to the nth power first, and then times x to the nth power. Okay? And then, in fact, I did another video in a more detailed explanation of this one, so you can check that out. But then we need to use this first, and then differentiate. Let's show you how to differentiate 1 over 1 plus x. This is the quotient. And then the quotient rule says we have to square the denominator, right? And you see that's a hint on why we should use differentiation because this function is something squared on the denominator. Anyways, I'll show you how to differentiate this with the quotient rule. This right here, we first look at the denominator, 1 plus x, put that in the parentheses, and then raise that to a second power. And the quotient rule says we will put down the bottom function, which is 1 plus x times the derivative of the top, the derivative of 1 is 0, so we have the 0 right here. And then we subtract the top function, which is 1, times the derivative of the bottom function. The derivative of 1 is 0, the derivative of positive x is 1, so we'll multiply by 1. So in another word, the derivative of this is going to be, well this is 0, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1 over this 1 plus x, and then raised to a second power. So we differentiate the left hand side, we get that. And we also differentiate the right hand side, d dx. So this is going to be the same as, um, let me just put on sigma when n starts with some number, raised to the infinity, right, well not raised to the infinity, n starts with some number up to infinity. And to differentiate this, this is just like a number, so we can just put on negative 1 to the nth power, this is the function part x to the nth power. We bring the power to the front and then minus 1. So we have n times x to the n minus 1 power. This is the same as that. And one more thing is that, well, what should be our starting value for n? This is one thing that we can do real quick. Whenever we differentiate a power series, we'll lose one term, most likely. And the, the key is, you can first just uh, maintain the same term, for example, n is equal to 0, but then you see that the moment when you plug in n is equal to 0 into this equation, into this formula here, the first term you produce 0 because you have this n. And we like to avoid redundancy. So we will start with n is equal to 1 instead. When n is equal to 1, we will produce our first non-zero term. And you will you know, just plug in 1 to all the n, you produce, I think the first term is going to be negative 1 to the n, which is 1, times 1 times x to the 0 power, 1 minus 1. So you have negative 1 for the first term. Anyways, this is the same as that. But then, our original function is positive 1 on top, here we have negative 1. Well, not that bad, because we can multiply both sides by negative 1. Let's do that. Negative 1 times 1, I mean negative 1 times negative 1, we have positive 1 on the top over 1 plus x 
raised to the second power. And then for this right here, I will just multiply it out the negative one into this, multiply the inside. Okay, not multiply it out, multiply this and that. I will keep the same sigma notation and goes from one to infinity. This will be negative one to the n power plus one because I multiplied this with that. And then we have the x to the m minus one power. And that's pretty much it. f of x, which is this function, which is that, that's the power series expansion. But then in the, um, the answer in the back of the book, this is what they do. They want to have x to the n power instead of x to the n minus one power. So what they do is they look at this formula here. Oh, by the way, I forgot an earlier. They look at this formula here. They just add one into all the n. So let me show you. This is going to be negative one to the n plus one and then plus one. And then this n becomes n plus one. And then this n becomes n plus one. But then we still have the minus one over uh, there. So they add one to all this n, but then to compromise that, they subtract one from the starting value. u. So instead of one, because n is zero up to infinity. At the end, we can simplify this a little bit. This is going to be sigma when n goes from zero to infinity. And then this is negative one to the n plus two power. And if you break this apart, this is the same as negative one to the n times negative one to the second. This is just one. So we just met, we just care about negative one to the nth power times n plus one times x to the uh, m, my, m plus one minus one, just n. So, well, this is just as fun actually, but then this is the answer in the back of the book. But both of them are equivalent to that. However, this is an uh, important thing I have to tell you. Whenever you use differentiation with our best friend, either version, because this is not really our best friend, we differentiate this and then we come up with the power series for this function. If that's the case, whenever we differentiate or integrate, uh, with a version with our best friend. The radius of convergence stays the same. So in this case, we know this is the form, but then we should also include that the radius of convergence is r is equal to one, because earlier r was equal to one right, for our best friend. And then r was equal to one with this as well. You have to worry when we have, let's say one over one plus three x, things like that, or one over one minus four x squared, or things like that. Then the radius of convergence will change. And whenever we differentiate or integrate um, the function and they get the power series, even though the radius of convergence stays the same, but then we still have to check. This is the case that we have to check the convergence at the end points. But in this case, we just worry about the radius of convergence, so we can just put on r is equal to one. And this is it for this question.